Would you wear all your favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation. Apple Max. Take it to the max. Introducing the Smart Kicker from iConnect, the most affordable smartphone on the market. With a photo focus capable 2 megapixel camera, you can't miss out on any of the action. Over 400 hours of standby battery time and 32 gig external memory. That's more than enough space for all your series, music, pics, apps and games. Get yours today from iConnect for a limited offer of only 499 kwacha, including 300 MB iSpot internet from iConnect. The Smart Kicker, available at iConnect. iConnect, make it happen. Want to just get out of town with your friends and family? Are you having a corporate getaway and have no adequate transport? Then this here is what you need to listen to. A brand new 35-seater Yutong luxury bus is now up for hire at an affordable and negotiable rate. It comes fully equipped with aircon, TV for your relaxation, music soothing your trip, and DVD players to give you variety. Book now by calling 0955 Zero nine six six or nine seven seven eight four four one four one. What makes the new Yo Yo Chipsy so unique? One hundred percent natural ingredients. Nothing artificial. like to do. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real cause you look so free so let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. A quality product from Californian Beverages. watching the menus on prime television thank you so much for joining us on the desk to present it my name is Carlin Muchima a look at the headlines divided MMD begins preparations for convention to elect new leaders ZCTU questions the competence of a president Edgar Lungu's advisors capital breweries in eight months salary arrears to workers and in foreign news Nigeria launches final onslaught against Boko Haram. Those are the headlines. Join me shortly with the news in detail.
the main news in detail on Prime TV's main news. My name is Kala Nchima once again. Opposition movement for multi-party democracy, MMD President Nevas Mumba, has directed that the party begins preparations for a national convention to elect new leaders. Speaking during the party's national policy conference in Osaka, Dr. Mumba said he is itching for a convention contrary to his perceptions by enemies of the party that he is holding on to the party's presidency. Dr. Mumba stated that all those pushing for the convention should begin to prepare themselves as he himself is more than ready to attend the convention when it comes. And Dr. Mumba has announced that enemies of the party have failed to kill the MMD. He announced that from the time he ascended to the MMD presidency, many forces, both internal and outside, have fought him but have failed. Positioning itself where it has always been, and that is to rule Zambia once again. The party has gone through trials and tribulations since 2011, arising from internal and outside forces. But this has not shattered the dreams of the party's leadership, but instead, the party has continued to believe that Zambians will once again give them a mandate to rule them. In pursuant of their dreams, the party on Wednesday held its national policy conference to chart the way forward for the party. The conference, which has attracted delegates from across Zambia and is expected to make a number of resolutions leading to the party's general conference, is meeting in Osaka for three days. Party President Nevas Mumba officially opened the conference and urged the members to remain strong even in terms of political turmoils. Zambians are no longer interested in any more squabbles from the same people whose goal is to manipulate the constitution of our party and impose themselves on the party. Zambians are tired. The same party in the newspaper, not for ideas, but for who threw the, 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 the smartest punch. I don't want to be identified in that manner. That's why I've said the hostilities are over. And anybody else who wants to continue the hostilities, we have advised them to start their own parties called Fighting Party, United F Fighting Party for Zambia. Dr. Mumba also took advantage of the occasion to assure the members that no amount of intimidation from several quarters will sink the MMD. It is through the ballot box that anyone can become president. This will not be changed for anyone or any special interest group. We shall stay the course and follow our constitution. MMD, like I've already said, prides herself in the consistent holding of national conventions. I'm glad to announce that in preparation for a party convention at the constitutionally appointed time, the process of holding the convention has actually started. We shall immediately launch elections at branch level all the way up to the national level. In the true spirit of the party, even MPs who campaigned for other political parties in the last election were in attendance including those serving in the current PF government. <laughs> Kalan Chima reporting for Prime TV News in Nusaka. President Edgar Lungu has sworn in Dan Kalelia as the new Bank of Zambia governor following his ratification by parliament last week. Dr. Kalelia takes over from Michael Gondwe, who served as Bank of Zambia governor for the last three years. President Lungu notes that the Zambia's culture is facing pressure against the United States dollar and other foreign convertible currencies. He has directed Dr. Kalelia to quickly find a solution to the declining value of the culture against foreign convertibles. Mr. Lungu said this at State House. Wednesday, when he saw in Dr. Kalialia, he observed that other currencies in the region were facing similar challenges of the devaluation of the currencies. And speaking to journalists after being sworn in, Dr. Kalialia said the devaluation of the quarter requires considered efforts from all key stakeholders. Zambia Congress of Trade Unions, ZCTU, has questioned the competence and 
capability of advisors surrounding President Edgar Lungu, ZCTU Secretary General Cosmas Mkuka says there are many economic problems that need to be sorted out, but the government and the president has done little to resolve them. Mr. Mkuka has wondered why up to now nothing has been done to correct the situation regarding fuel shortages and the depreciation of the kwacha, which have affected the lives of people in the country. He adds that the shortage of fuel has affected productivity because workers report led for work in search of fuel. Mr. Mkoka said this at a media briefing in Osaka Wednesday. Underestimate the damage the fuel shortage is causing to the economy and to urge those responsible for the procurement of the fuel to hasten the process before the situation gets out of hand. We call upon government to settle any issues of payments and immediately deal with the any logistical problem so that we, the commodity can be available to the public. The shortage is negatively affecting colleagues, the product, productivity, because the workers are forced to report to work late and leave their working premises early in search of fuel. It's a pity that the fuel shortage has continued despite government's assurances that the country had sufficient stock and that people should not go into panic buying. Meanwhile, Mr. Mkuka has appealed to President Edgar Lungu to intervene and rescind the decision by government to stop providing salary grants to district councils. Mr. Mkuka says enacting Local Government Act No. 12 of 2014, which removes the law of the state in providing grants to district council, is affecting workers. He says there is need for Mr. Lungu to reverse the act because it will worsen the financial situation of district councils and this will result in poor service delivery. Mr. Mkuka says the councils are already behind by about 30 months in paying salaries and the situation will be compounded by the withdrawal of grants by government. Mr. Mkuka said this at a media briefing in Osaka. Meets the cost of salaries and most councils do not have capacity to pay to, its, uh, to pay its workers. And this means that the workers will go without salaries for a long period of time, and of which it's a testimony in some of the councils where they have gone without salaries. Because some councils are situated in areas where, even when the Minister of Local Government is saying, can you, uh, uh, can you improve on the revenue collection? Where do they collect even revenue? Because they don't, they don't even have. A, a, a river, some of the councils not have even a river or the, a, a bigger population where every people can use their initiative. We are talking of councils like Rwanda, Ikelengi, and others. Then you, you, are, you ask animals to pay revenue which you want to collect there, apart because there are more animals than human beings. Workers at Capital Breweries in Lusaka have asked their management to pay them the eight months salary arrears it owes them. Speaking to Prime TV News in an interview, the workers have complained that they have worked for many years and have gone without pay. They indicate that they got their last pay in August 2014 and since then they have been working without pay to date. Some workers say they have been working as casual workers and have never been confirmed by management. The workers have since called on the Labor Office and the Ministry of Labor to intervene in the matter as the company is not willing to pay them their money. And efforts by Prime TV News to get a comment from the brewery manager Sarah Musa Banda proved futile as her mobile phone went unanswered. My last pay in Tinatengapa, my last year in September, so I expect to expect it. October to now, they don't pay 18 March, it can pop for up. So, if you go to Kanimale, I want to pay for you to attend this record. Management to Kanda, Kovakusa, the company, the Pendram. So, this is a major painting that it is because we've been going there. But this is what happened. 
just if you are just coming out of this company you are in a, a, a thief anyone um, from may up to now even my children have been kicked out from school i don't know how they are they are i'm just bearing them near every day even now i'm a destitute of zambia i'm a true pedestrian of zambia also through what is happening through this company why did, where can they just check me home Those are some of the unending labor disputes in Zambia. We hope one day such complaints will end. You're watching the live broadcast of the main news on Prime TV. We go for a break. Join me shortly. all your favorite hats at the same time well we wouldn't either that is why we suggest you use only what you need switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom remember use only what you need and save power today switch and save zesco powering the nation What's your name? Let me talk to you for just a minute. Where you live and what you like to do? Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real because you look so free. So let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. A quality product from Californian Beverages. Thank you so much for staying with us and now for the rest of the news. A Lusaka-based pastor has castigated government for generalizing the whole church that that the whole church is taking ill of uh, is talking ill of President Edgar Lungu's health. Bishop Paul Wupe, overseer of uh, the Redeemed Methodist Church, says when a pastor comments on President Lungu's health, that does not represent the views of the whole church in Zambia. He adds that politicians, especially those in government, must not mistake the church for personal views expressed by one preacher on President Edgar Lungu's health. Reverend Wope was speaking in an interview with Prime TV News in Lusaka. He has stressed that government needs to understand that it is not the whole church which is attacking President Lungu on his health. As Africans, it's uh, unacceptable to even debate somebody's health in public. And I'm also uh, disturbed by the fact that there are news medias that are currently, uh, even in the time past, just talking about one person every other day. Now, my main concern as at now is a statement that pertains to generalization with regard to the activities of the church. If somebody makes a mistake, a pastor for that matter, and uh, he talks about something that is not agreeable by every other clergy, I advise that uh, the government or any other media should not categorically condemn the church. So we need to be careful how we use the word church. 
because we don't want to condemn everybody because of one person's statement. If somebody makes a statement, he must be identified and that particular congregation be identified or particular individual. The Professional Teachers Union of Zambia, Protus, says the increase in retirement age has brought a lot of anxiety among teachers. Protus Secretary General Albert Muyembe says the increase of the retirement age has affected teachers because they were not sure of what age to retire. He adds that it is important that the cabinet has clarified on the matter that the retirement age has been divided into three parts, which include... 55, 60, and 65 years. Mr. Mienbe says it is worth noting that the retirement age is optional depending on the strength and capabilities of an individual. He has further aged teachers to prepare themselves adequately for retirement and to avoid getting unnecessary loans. It is important to make things clear because some people did not understand. Some teachers thought that the retirement age of 55 years had been abolished but when we you know we, when we we sought you know in clarification from psmd which is under cabinet that is public service management division under cabinet office we the clarification that we have gotten so far is that uh, the retirement age is in three parts there is 55 years meaning that it has not been abolished years so we still have 55 years as retirement age, which is early retirement. But those who, that, those who feel that they, they, they are still you know, you know, energetic enough to continue, they will continue up to 60 years. And then those that feel that they can continue even after working, for, after working at the age of 60 years, they will continue up to 65 years. The fuel crisis in the country has continued. The crisis has now entered day 11 with government announcing that the fuel situation will soon normalize. As of Monday, government announced that a tank carrying crude oil was about to dock at the port of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. But a check by Prime TV News around Lusaka on Wednesday revealed that most filling stations had no fuel as most of them were deserted. Along the Great Easter Road, no filling station had fuel, but some hope was at Puma filling station along, uh, along Long Acres, where a queue of cars was seen. We're still watching the main news on Prime TV. We go for another break. International news will be up next just after this. Max. Take it to the max. What makes the new Yo Yo Chipsy so unique? 100% natural ingredients. Nothing artificial. Thank you so much for still staying with us in now international news. Nigeria has begun the final onslaught against the Boko Haram. The country's national security spokesperson has said after the armed group was thrown out of the strategic town of Bama. On a visit to London, Mike O'Meary said on Tuesday that a significant strategic military success and gains had been made against the Boko Haram in recent weeks. 
Adamam Gonze and Asikra are also in Bono State, which has been west hit by six years of violence and was under emergency rule from May 2013 to November last year with neighboring Yobe and Adamawa. The military announced that Adamawa was cleared last Friday and that Yobe was retaken on Monday from Boko Haram, who have pledged allegiance to the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant ISIL group. Boko Haram is fighting to form an Islamic State encompassing several states of northern Nigeria. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's right-wing Likud party has won a surprise victory in Israel's election. Exit polls had forecast a dead hit, but with almost all votes counted, results give Likud a clear lead over its main rival, the center-left uh, Zionist Union. The outcome gives Mr. Netanyahu a strong chance of forming a right-wing coalition government. The result puts the incumbent on course to clinch a fourth term and become Israel's longest serving prime minister. The latest tally gives the Likud 29 seats in the 120 seat parliament, the nest with the Zionist Union on 24 seats. In a speech to his jubilant supporters in the Tel Aviv after Tuesday's pause, Closed, Mr. Netanyahu said he had already spoken to the leaders of other right-of-center parties about forming a new government without delay. For more international roundups, we we'll cross over to Al Jazeera. Israel's opposition leader Isaac Herzog has called Benjamin Netanyahu, congratulating him on his election win. 99% of the votes have been counted and results show the Likud party of Netanyahu has 29 seats, the Zionist Union of Isaac Herzog 24. Police in the German city of Frankfurt have fired tear gas at anti-capitalist protesters. Around 10,000 people are expected out on the streets during a day of rallies as they try to disrupt the opening ceremony of the European Central Bank's new headquarters. Iraqi government forces, volunteer fighters and militias are being accused of deliberately destroying civilian homes and property in the town of Amelie. Human Rights Watch says it has documented evidence to prove troops destroyed parts of the town during their operation against ISIL fighters. Iraqi security forces say three people have died after an explosion near the border with Kuwait. A truck blew up near the entrance of Umm Qasar port in Basra province in southern Iraq. At least seven people have been killed after a car bombing in the Afghan city of Lashkagar, which is the capital of Helmand province. The Interior Ministry says the target of the bombing was the head of the provincial council there. Indonesian rescue teams are calling off the search for victims of the Air Asia plane crash in the Java Sea. The plane was on its way from Surabaya to Singapore back in December. Stormy weather blamed for that accident. All 162 people on board were killed. The Red Cross has launched a $3.8 million emergency appeal to help Vanuatu after it was devastated by Cyclone Pan. Aid agencies are scrambling to deliver food and water to some of the remote islands. A state of emergency to Brazilian state of Amazonas after heavy flooding. The Civil Defense Department says 20,000 people have been affected. And the water supply in the Boca do Eca region has been shut down, leaving locals without drinking water. 20 people have died from swine flu in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state. The H1N1 influenza virus has already killed 1,500 people in India this year. The government is sending antiviral drugs to the area to cope with the outbreak. As we conclude with our main news on that uh, foreign roundup, a look at the headlines once again. Divided MMD begins preparations for convention to elect new leaders. ZCTU questions the competence of President Edgar Lungu's advisors. Capital breweries in eight months, salary arrears to workers. And foreign news, Nigeria launches a final onslaught against Boko Haram. That will do for now. Thank you so much for your company. On behalf of the entire studio and technical crew, my name is Kalan Mchima. Thank you so much. For joining us on the main news desk, be sure to join us again for yet another update at 6.30 hours. Bye-bye for now.
Hey girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you for just a minute. Where you live and what you like to do? Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real because you look so free. So let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. A quality product from Californian Beverages. All your favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation. <laughs> 